you don't starve so somebody else can eat okay that we're not doing martyrdom we're doing resurrection <laughs> all right a lot of times you know just by freeing yourself you, you can free others you can free others because right. they see you you know and nothing that we do right. you know goes unnoticed or does not have some type of That's effect right. on yeah. others yeah. Uh, Regardless I of who mean they it, are, whether it's negative or positive, yeah, you can influence. Yeah. You can influence. Yeah, you can by influence. An example. I mean, if you're yeah, you sure can. yourself, mm -hmm. and the things yeah. that you do, and things start to work in your life mm -hmm. because of following whatever. Then once you get to a particular point, you know, people that see what's going on in your life, at some point they start to ask you, mm -hmm. "Well, you know, what are you doing? You know, right. what is it that that's working for you? So right. it's something that uh, you know." Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, we can spend a lot of the rest of this time speculating here. Let's try to get a little bit more information. I appreciate where you are in terms of your thinking, Charlie, and that's very Moorish. Uh, we are, by nature, universal beings. Uh, we're, we're, we're learning how to gain that perception. But I, I tend to think uh, uh, that many times we want to run across the street and save the stranger before we save those in our own house and upstairs. By save, I mean help, to enlighten, help to educate, help to correct one's thinking, to share. You can't help anyone that doesn't want your help. You can't give them your light and your power if they don't want it, okay? Each soul must have a certain level of desire in order to transform, see? Otherwise, you're virtually Casting your pearls among swine thinking. Let me remind you of something you said. Go ahead. Uh -huh. You know you all I've been thinking. And I really come to the conclusion that Oprah is the new sojourner. Not, I didn't say new. I didn't say new. White, well, she's the she, incarnation she's, she, that's of right. sojourner. Yeah. Because she speaks uh -huh. to the white female in this country without a doubt. And no doubt they listen. They listen. That's right. And, and and in that you 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 wonder now all of the you know then this black woman has all that influence. Mm -hmm. it, why would she have so much influence if it wasn't in our nature to bring that level of thinking that they are on the mm -hmm. beast like thinking up to another level? She's given a avenue that does two things: allows her to express her humanity. She got the floor and. Two, to gain her rewarding of what she has given in her previous life. She has been effective and influential in many black folks' lives. She is a pro-feminine. She's a feminist first as a woman. She's not what you would call a spiritual teacher, though they want to put the laurel of guru around her neck. But she is an educator. She is a cultivator. From the peculiar viewpoint, that of entertainment, you know, where, where it's acceptable. But she gets the respect and response of any master teacher in this country. She's over got a vast audience out there. Black women don't watch that much. A lot of them do. You know, in fact, I recall when, when she threw this scarf on her shoulder, went downtown, every other black woman downtown had a scarf on her shoulder. Oh, black women listen to her, you know, but she doesn't deal with Afrocentricity. She doesn't deal with it. Well, yeah. I'm saying that spirit yeah. is yeah. there. Yeah, uh, she, well, she talks new thought. She talks being grateful, thinking positive, you know. She even had something, and the rest of them haven't done. She had a woman on there having a whole audience not only pray, but meditate, mm -hmm. you know. And she's an entertainer. See? Of course, one can do damn near what you want to do, you know. But, I mean, you can see these earmarks of this spiritual being in a peculiar situation t trying to raise consciousness, you, you know. We, we don't have a, BET is doing boogaloo. They, they're not doing, now they're supposed to be trying to get to some culture now, you know. But uh, we don't have a avenue of television connect where black teachers, educators, cultivators can get to a large percentage of black people. We ain't got it, you know. You know we ought to have it, but we ain't got it. So, because, even though we don't have it, the most popular black woman in America and in the Western Hemisphere, 
probably the most popular woman, yeah. it, it is on television. Yeah. Every now and then, but you know, Oprah, 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 Oprah does not let you forget that she's still black. She don't let you forget it, you know. Yeah. She just doesn't do, just kill the white boy. You know, that used to represent being black, you know. Yeah. You ain't black as me. I want them all dead. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, that was the thinking of the 60s, man. Chilling thought. Chilling. Whew. Okay, what time is it? What time did we start? Two? Did we get started about two o'clock? Okay. Okay, we're going to get a good meditation here, so we're going to halt there. Uh, I, my good advice is get a copy of this book first before you buy the ephemeris. They don't have any up there. <laughs> is that, it looks like one up there. Is that one of them? No. That's blue. This book is purple. The only astrology book you'll ever need. It's good. She explains things clearly. She makes sure you know what she's talking about. Uh, nice big pages, <laughs> big letters, so we can see what's going on. 35 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, that's right. You don't put your stuff up there. I have more than 35 minutes worth of talk up here. I don't need any books. <laughs> this is my subject, my honey. <laughs> the mother Zudakias, the grand circle, is the theme. It's how we become free man. <laughs> yeah, you've know, you also know that you don't hear folks saying freedom, free man, liberation. How many times you hear that today, as opposed to nineteen? 65, 66. Time you turn around, brother. Freedom, blah, blah. You know, throw it up there for you. You know, yeah, we don't. Might even, might have even forgot how to spell the word. But it's still about freedom. It, it, it has never been about anything else. Uh, yeah. Hell, I don't want a, a, a black Ku Klux Klan running the show. No more. Than I want a white Ku Klux Klan running the show. We, we don't want to trade uh, oppressors. The problem of the collective psychology is that those who get in charge of a system that's designed to take advantage of will have to take advantage of. Whoever is sitting in the damn chair, he's sitting in the chair of disadvantage for the masses. That's just how it is. That's the system doing it. So It, it doesn't please me that Jesse Jackson would have gotten to the White House and been uh, Bill Clinton or Bush or somebody else who have to make and take away laws that they made in order to figure out and finagle the, the income around. No, we're looking for that which we can only find within ourselves. It, nobody has it. Nobody can take it from you and nobody can give it to you. You got it. You have to draw it out. Edukari, to draw out that which is within. In the face of the zodiac, this language tells us about that inner self, the mother Zudikias, the concept that is left out of 99% of astrology. I'm looking for my chart now uh, because it is based on, this culture is based on the patriarchal view of things, the man view of things instead of the womb man the mother view of things uh, which is the beginning of human civilization I might add <laughs> it begins with mama in, in the legendary she didn't even need a man to start out with to make a baby she could do it by herself I know that's rather shocking <laughs> This is about as close as we have to a, you don't even have the stand out here, to a uh, Moorish chart of the zodiac. And uh, as, I, as I confess, this comes from the Rosicrucian literatures, the concept and this chart. 
the, the, the clock of destiny was borrowed by C.M. Bay to do his pamphlets, and a very appropriate one, because the Rosicrucians did not create the clock. <laughs> they just coined the idea of clock of destiny. That is exactly what the charting of the universe does. We are destined to go somewhere. We are going somewhere. We are not standing still. We are in motion, moving at enormous rate of speed. If you think about this, plight 24 hours. Are you all getting the sense that time is zooming? Are you getting that sense? This it does, does not seem... Well, that's because it's speeding up. Every year, the planet moves one degree faster than it did the last year. So we're, we're definitely traveling. You see? The, the, the big idea that Johnson Bay and CM Bay seem to push more in their teaching, of course, they didn't even call themselves teachers. They wanted to be called uh, instructors, which is all right, you know, because the reality of the thing is there's only one teacher. And, and that's your own higher consciousness. That's the real teacher. But someone has to stimulate. The concept teach means to touch. The only thing you can touch with teach is the mind. See? To stimulate, to inspire, to open. J just with a word. You know, one brother mentioned something to me about those times when you were having or seeing something by the name Don Freeman. And when he said that, my astrolite clicked on. And I could see this little bulb in the back of my head. It was a brownish, bronzish, shining bulb. You know, I, I remember the dream I had. You know, you know. And he just, he didn't know that, but he stimulated my consciousness. That's what teaching does, particularly when it's about the soul or self, because the soul is waiting to hear certain keys, certain ideas, certain truths, you see? Th then it responds. That's real educare. The rest of it is virtually instructions and skill getting. We already talked about the, uh, the core rain. I love that little idea. It, stimulates me. I was looking for a chart here. The ones I would like to talk about right now in relationship to the zodiac are in my tube. Oh, okay. That's what I can do. One of the questions I wanted to raise, what chapter and what verse <coughs> in the scripture shows the disorganization of the African's self-image, the defaming, the distortion of the African self-image, a very important chapter and verse in the Bible. Anybody know what that is? Right? Remember the chapter? Do you remember the verse? You, you wouldn't know that. Unless you see my tapes. You, you told us one. The oracle to... There's two oracles relevant to us in Isaiah. The oracle to and the oracle to. <laughs> Anybody remember? These are the kinds of insights when you're talking to uh, brother, believer, and sister Jesus that, that can help them as well as block some of that fervor she will bring to you, you know, about this distortion and tampering with the Bible you know, that uh, Elijah threw out there, but he didn't underline anything. You know, Isaiah chapter 18, the oracle to Ethiopia or Cush, you know, and it's, it's such a key point because it, it is a comparative in terms of looking at the Bible, and, you know, because 
a lot of stuff that is said theologically, people don't try to prove, can't prove, and don't care if you believe it or not, they're going to say it and believe it. When you look at the King James Version of the Scripture, which was written in 16, published in 1611, we don't know when it was written, published in 1611, and read this verse that you never hear from Reverend Biscuit's pulpit. Never, ever. <laughs> and I emphasize that little <laughs> nasty remark. <laughs> I try to make this book relevant so that you all will be willing to buy one, carry one, and study one. Oh, I got five of them at home, the brother said. Well, hey, why don't you bring one once? <laughs> Go ahead, read it out. Chapter 18, verse 1. Huh? Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Attendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the waters, saying, Go, ye swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto. A nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Very good. Okay. And now, you, you remember that, don't you? You're hearing that? Okay. I, this is the kind of stuff that the white reverend would read, you know, to his congregation about those folks out there in the shack that were their free labors as the rationale of why they could put your ancestors in slavery. Terrible from their beginning. You know, he'd stand and shake, you know. You know. I mean, this, okay, hey, if you want to know what was going on, why good, decent white folks, Christian, were willing to have slaves. It had nothing to do with the government. It had to do with that fella in the pulpit who could justify this stuff. You know, of course, they ended up with a, a terrible schizophrenia, but at least they could make it recede to the back of their head. Now, that was published in approximately 1611. That is the second publication of Bible. The first publication is the confraternity Douye version of the Bible, the Catholic Bible. This is a retranslation of that script, published in 1895. Okay. I'm going to read the same two verses from the same chapter of the Holy Bible. Alas, O land of whirring wings, which lies beyond the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by the sea, even in papyrus vessels on the surface of the waters, go swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared far and wide, a powerful and oppressive people whose land the rivers divide. Yeah, that That's die. another whole another Bible in it. <laughs> so you can see why they changed that, okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, well, let, let me finish my thought here. I'm trying to point out here the distortion and the pattern and rationale of how this mental distortion took place, not overnight, not over, you know, a period of weeks and months, but a period of time, okay? The, the declining mental status of the African, of the African genius, okay, uh, uh, took, took a while, you see, but, but they were doing these tricks, you see? Okay. Yes, okay, go ahead. Um, my question. Just ask the questions. Don't make no excuses. <laughs> Go ahead. So if that's based on the class Friday. Friday. Okay. So why, if, if the translation has changed that much from the Catholic Bible to the, the uh, Protestants, Protestants. Then why then is it still? I mean, how? Why study this new King? Well, not new, the King James version, Protestant version. 
if everything is going to be that much switched everything, off. Everything is not. I'm okay. being specific here. Okay. okay? Uh, that, that doesn't mean it hasn't been tampered. We know it's been tampered with because we know this is not the original Christian theological Bible. The Protestants book is the refutation to the Catholic Church, Catholic theology, and the Catholic Bible, and the Catholic Pope. That's the existence of the Protestant religion called Protestants. That's why they exist. They protested every damn thing about the Catholic Church, including their book, their robe, and their candles. Okay? So I think the question I'm asking is yeah. talking about uh, more science and the decoding. Most Moors don't, do, don't deal with this. You know, this brother back here want to proclaim it as destroyed. <laughs> they don't even fool with it. You know, because they're not dealing with symbolic language and codex inscriptus, the code and the secrets written in it. A Kabbalistic writer fixed this up. That makes him a Moor as to whether he wanted to be or not. He used Moorish science to compile it and structure it. If the whole group of them did the same, did the book, then they were Moors in their thinking, in their knowledge, in their approach. Okay. Why? This book is in the back of your head, your head, your head, your, and my head, and his. <laughs> Just because you say it ain't no good, it ain't right, don't take it out of the back of your head. Hell, even right now, you say close your eyes and think of Jesus. Most of you see a white man <laughs> with brown hair. True knowledge, accurate knowledge, explains things so that you understand them. This alleviates the burden of belief. It alleviates knowledge. Understanding alleviates the burden of belief. The burden of belief is you are a sinner when you walk through his door. <laughs> he don't know your damn name, but he know you're a sinner. Okay. And you're supposed to believe that in order to get saved. Yeah. It has nothing to do with your nature, physical, mental, or spiritual. It has everything to do with your psychology. Everything. To do. The, the, the most guilt-ridden group of human beings down here are Catholic women, black or white. <laughs> they got the worst complex about their sexuality, their femininity, and their womanhood. Even though got, they got a virgin woman as God yeah. because she's a virgin. <laughs> and they ain't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, it, you're supposed to think your way out of these mazes somebody else has set up. Okay? That's what a Moor does. He ain't buying. I, I believe. I believe. I believe. Is he looking yet? I believe. <laughs> that ain't what he's doing. Moors don't do that. Okay? We're, we're trying to, to know you the truth. And the truth will set you free. <laughs> know you the truth. That's what we are about. That's what you means in Codex in Scriptures. That's right. That's what you're supposed to know. That's what we're trying to do. The thematic of this book is not Jesus, is not Jehovah, is not angels, is not the devil. It is G-O-D. John chapter 10, verses 31 to 36 is the theme of the Bible. Godhood is the theme. Okay. How you get to that theme is by knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Self-knowledge. That's what any and all study is supposed to be about. Even chemistry, herbs, 
vitamins, whiskey, wine, beer, and whatever. Will it help me? Will it hurt me? <laughs> As you study from self out to the world, your environment, your greater environment. Study from yourself inward to the world, your inner greater environment. That, that, that's putting on the crown of life one degree at a time. <laughs> okay? The backup is found in, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and I, I keep mentioning it, and I'm always mentioning it, uh, Psalm 82, verse 5 and 8. When, when you talk about what scripture is he talking about, it's right there in the same book that one came out of. Okay. Yes. And uh, the whole of that, I usually never deal with the whole of that scripture. I leave it for you all to study. But nobody's ever brought, brought back the rest of it to me and said, oh, and also, brother, <laughs> I, like to, I like to hear that. That lets me know. The brother's been doing some busting some pages, as the one brother said. I'm going home, brother, and bust some pages. 82, verse 5 to 8. There's another little glitch in there that they altered, of course. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Well, does that mean the planet? No, it does not. All the foundations of the earth, which is your body, are out of course, not working, not functioning. How many foundations are there? Twelve. <laughs> are out of course. Okay. If you keep the Godhood theme as you read that, it explains that to you that it's talking about you as God the whole verse is talking about Godhood even though it does not appear that way I have said you are ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes arise O God judge the earth for thou shalt inherit all nations. Still talking to you. <laughs> so it doesn't appear to. Because all they have to do is then is, that's why they use this G and this G. <laughs> there is no little God and a big God. There is only God. <laughs> but in writing to clothe and cover, then all they got to do is do this one and this one. Yeah. They can make this one evil and false. You see, with a little g, you know. Oh, it's talk of the false gods in the Bible. You know? So learning how to discern is what having the keys of Moorish science is about. Of understanding a that you're reading a coded book, not a belief book. And Reverend Biscuit tried to insist upon that in a, in a college uh, forum in Cleveland State. The Bible is a faith book. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I know that I jumped on it with all four feet. <laughs> it made him so mad when I went down to shake his hand. <laughs> he didn't want to shake my hand <laughs> with his good soul and good heart. Truth can embarrass a preacher. You know? kind of reminded me of a situation where mm -hmm. uh, Caliph Muhammad debated mm -hmm. uh, school of rabbis or a group of uh, religious... Oh, okay, yeah. And the rabbi cursed. <laughs> he, yeah. he, lost, he lost it. He lost it. <laughs> 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 I said, damn lie. <laughs> he just, he lost yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When, when that point comes where you shatter their system. And by their, I mean any belief system. That's Islam. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, the, the, the believer becomes unnerved. And, and, yeah, and, and you can make that believer not only fight for what he believes, you can make that believer kill for what he believes. 
But that's what they're doing running around um, blowing up and shooting these doctors because, I mean, you're dealing with abortion. Same, same thing, same, same motivation. Thing. Yeah, same. In the sake of, they're doing God's work by killing somebody who was killing babies. That, that's, you know, that's the just, justification for it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. They justify it. And then the community of that same set of believers justified it because they got tremendous support in the world. They may feed off it. I want to point out a very remarkable. Uh, Peculiarity as best I can call it at this moment. Revelation chapter 7, verse 6. Of the tribe of Asher, of the tribe of Simon, wait a minute, of the tribe of Asher, of the tribe of Naphtali, of Naphtalim, of the tribe of Manasseh, of the tribe of Simon, of the tribe of Levi, of Issachar, of Zebulon, of Joseph, of Benjamin. What's wrong with that picture? Right, that left out. But I read 12. What's wrong with that picture? Interesting, isn't it? Why did Dan get left out? That, that's the interesting point. I'm, I'm working on that one. Oh, okay. Uh, the other is, if I read 12 names, and one of the sons that's previously called the son of Jacob is left out, then the other name must be what? It must not be one of the sons of Jacob. What name took the place of Dan? Manasseh. Manasseh, okay. Um, yeah which says that they're not talking about the 12 sons of Jacob, which says they're not talking about 12 tribes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That it's symbological, that they're talking about something other than. When you add this to a number, whatever the number is, it adds divinity. This is divinity to the second degree. This is divinity to the third degree. This is God, God, God. Whatever number is here, the zero indicates divine power. So the 12,000 is still here. <laughs> okay? They ain't gone nowhere. Manessa comes from this. That means mind. So we add divine mind to the 12 now in the revelation of the same twelve but they are illumined they are divine okay. oh okay all right yeah. you, you don't see you don't hear preachers mentioning this name of jesus they, except on christmas they don't talk about that name they hurry and get to the <laughs> The believing fact, or they got to explain this one. If if his name is Jesus, well, how come they call him Emmanuel? Here's the key: mind of God. Of course, the the, the, the writing is. It means, and God is with us. God ain't never been no bear but, but with us. If it was ever a way, we would not be. We live, move, and have our being in God. Or in the mind we call God. But when it's conscious, you then become Lord of the earth. When you're conscious of the twelve, Not, not the, of Jacob, of Israel. It's not disciples. That, that's your discipline. Apostle, ap the apostate state. Th th then you're conscious. And the 12 stars. <laughs> okay. The 12 goes on. 
and on and on and on. See? This is the blueprint of what's happening in our world. Okay? This is what our children must come to study when they get this big. So when they come to the door, they don't say, my name is Bobby. I'm Jim and I, born, and they call me Bobby. <laughs> okay. You know, if he's going to know who he is, you see, self-knowledge. Then if, if, if he says Bobby, or if you call him Bobby, he says, well, my name really isn't Bobby, it's Robert, and Robert is a 33 vibration, and 33, <laughs> he'd be able to tell you what, you know, what he, he's about. That's self-knowledge. And children are capable of doing that. You know, you don't have to wait till they get to be 35, you know, and, and shoot somebody and, and, and get 15 to life <laughs> before you tell them that they're God. <laughs> you, you, you can tell them when they're this big, you know. Yeah. But we have to explain it to them. Knowledge is not something you believe. It's something you understand and something you know. Because behind it comes something you have to do <laughs> when you get real knowledge. And if you don't do it, you will undo it. Instead of it doing positive, it will do negative. That's what I mean by the undoing. Okay, we got enough time on the tape there so they can sell it. <laughs> Let's prepare for the rest of work in Solomon's house.